Are you or a loved one suffering from depression or anxiety? Are you suffering from fibromyalgia or other types of pain? Has your doctor recommended that you take Cymbalta or the generic version Deloxetine? Are you concerned about the possible side effects? If so, then this is a video for you. Keep watching to learn a little bit more about what to watch out for and how this medication can be a help to you. Welcome to Family Med. I'm Dr. Richardson and this is your home for practical and accurate information to help your family make healthy decisions. This is the channel that focuses on bringing better health to your home. On today's episode, we're going to be going over a common antidepressant named Deloxetine, or more commonly referred to as Cymbalta. Deloxetine is a generic version of Cymbalta, which was released in 2004. Cymbalta is an interesting medication that was first released to treat depression and anxiety, but since has been found to be helpful with other conditions, such as fibromyalgia, joint pain, nerve pain oftentimes associated with diabetes, and even menopausal hot flashes. It's in the class of medications that we call SNRIs, or Selective Norepinephrine Reuptake Inhibitors. These are a group of medications that target where the nerves release the hormones serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain, helping decrease how rapidly it is broken down in the nerves, thus keeping your levels higher. Serotonin and norepinephrine are chemicals or neurotransmitters that help regulate a lot of the functions in the body, like mood, social behavior, appetite, and digestion, sleep, memory, among other things. It's one of the chemicals that plays a big role in depression and anxiety, as well as in the perception of pain in the body. So when you're suffering from depression or anxiety, or even chronic pain, in addition to eating, doing things like eating healthy and exercise, counseling and therapy, and getting plenty of sleep, targeting these chemicals in the brain has been found to be very helpful in allowing people to resume a normal life when they're battling with these conditions. So as I mentioned before, Cymbalta is a medication that can be used for a lot of different conditions, including depression, anxiety, pain, and even hot flashes. Because of this, if you think you're suffering from any of these, then talk to your doctor about possible treatment options. If you think you're suffering from any of these conditions, especially depression and anxiety, it's important that you know that you don't have to live your whole life feeling this way. Go see your doctor so you can get an accurate diagnosis and figure out a good treatment plan for you. Remember, depression and anxiety are as a real of a medical condition as diabetes or high blood pressure, and you shouldn't feel any different about treating these conditions than you would any other type of medical condition. Okay, so you've talked to your doctor and you've both decided that for your symptoms, some Balta is going to be part of your treatment plan. So what should you expect? Well, first of all, it comes in a capsule at doses of 20, 30, and 60 milligrams. Most people end up being on between 30 and 60 milligrams a day. Now, it's the kind of medication that you need to take daily if you're going to be on it. Just like any other antidepressant medication, most people will start to notice some difference within one to two weeks, but it typically doesn't reach its full effect for four to six weeks. So you should be following up with your doctor within two to four weeks after starting on it to report on how things are working. Now, if you're going to be taking it, you want to make sure that you're not missing a lot of doses. Doing so can really affect how well it's going to work and increase your risk of having side effects. Also, unless you're having some more significant problems with the medication, especially after being on it a few weeks, you don't want to stop this medication abruptly. After being on it for a while, your brain gets used to a certain level of serotonin and norepinephrine, and stopping it quickly will really throw you off and make you feel bad. So most doctors recommend that if the medication is working well, you should take it for at least six months before you think about stopping it. Stopping it sooner than that because you feel like your depression or anxiety is gone, increase your risk for having your symptoms return. If you feel like it is something that's making a big difference in your life and you want to continue on it longer than the six months, then it's really safe to do so. But especially if you're taking it for your fibromyalgia or joint pain, the neuropathy, or even hot flashes, then you likely need to stay on it long term. It's a medication that treats more of the symptoms instead of the underlying problem. Now, I have patients that have decided that they just need to stay on it for years, and really that works for them. So what kind of side effects should you look out for? Well, as with any medication, you can find a big list of side effects that will be on the paperwork from your pharmacist. Sometimes these lists can be intimidating, but in the case of Cymbalta, it's really generally well tolerated. I rarely have patients on it that want to stop due to significant side effects. 
However, any medication has the potential of having some side effects, and some common ones that are possible could be these. You can have some headaches, some nausea, some tiredness or difficulty sleeping, some dry mouth or constipation, or even sometimes some abdominal pain. These types of symptoms tend to be short-lived in most people, and oftentimes, just by modifying when you take it, or by taking it with food, you can improve or even avoid a lot of them. But usually with time, they start to get better on their own. Now, one area of cons that concerns a lot of people is the effect that antidepressant medications can have on your intimate relations. This can be a known problem with most antidepressants, and it's certainly possible with duloxetine. In my experience, however, with patients, it really hasn't been a big complaint that I hear about a lot. I certainly hear more complaints from medications like Zoloft or Paxil, so Cymbalta tends to do pretty well. But if it does happen, don't despair. There are ways we can work with it. So don't stop taking the medication without talking to your doctor if this becomes a concern. Probably the most common reason I have somebody stop this or any antidepressant medication is that they just didn't like the way they made them feel. It may help with their depression or anxiety, so they don't feel sad anymore, but they don't feel happy either. And that certainly isn't the goal of this kind of treatment. Our goal is to help lift you up and out of the hole that you're in and help you see that life is doable again. If we turn you into a zombie and you're neither happy or sad, we aren't doing you any favors. We still want you to be happy when you're supposed to be happy and sad when you're supposed to be sad. So if you're noticing things like that, then talk to your doctor about other options that are out there. Now there are some rare side effects you need to pay more close attention to. Now this is not going to be an exhaustive list, however, it's important to know that first, all antidepressant medications, including duloxetine, have the risk of making your symptoms worse at first. You may be feeling da really down right now, but if all of a sudden your depression or anxiety gets worse, or you start having suicidal thoughts, you need to be in contact with your doctor and get help or even go to the emergency room. I've always recommend that when starting these kind of medications that you confide with somebody you trust and tell them that you're taking it. Let them know about the risks so they can help you recognize what is happening and assist you in getting the help that you need. Now, other rare side effects can be certain heart arrhythmias, some electrolyte disturbances, allergic reactions, and something called serotonin syndrome, where your body gets too much serotonin. This is very rare, but it can present with symptoms like agitation, confusion, rapid heart rate and high blood pressure, dilated pupils, loss of muscle coordination, muscle rigidity, diarrhea, and heavy sweating. If you think this is happening to you, get into your doctor or the emergency room right away. The worst part about discussing the side effects of medications is scaring you away from taking them. It's important to keep the perspective that the vast majority of people taking duloxetine do really well with minimal to no side effects. So if you are deciding not to take a medication like this due to the fear of having a very rare side effect, you could potentially be robbing yourself from an important tool in treating this disease. Remember, it's important to keep the perspective that if you're having a problem with the medication, you don't need to stay on it. There are a lot of other options out there, so get with your doctor and talk to them about your concerns. Depression and anxiety, as well as chronic pain, can be a very debilitating condition. It's as real as any other medical condition out there. When you have true clinical depression, taking something like Cymbalta can be a life-altering step. I'm always amazed at what a significant difference this medication has had on the life of my patients. It's certainly not for everybody, and yes, there are other non-medication options out there that may work for you. If, however, you and your doctor feel that this is the best option for your treatment plan, now you have a good foundation of knowledge of what to expect and what kind of side effects to watch for and having that information be really powerful in your life. Now this isn't an all-inclusive discussion of Cymbalta. And really, my purpose in sharing this information is to help you get information that you can think about and discuss with your own doctor. It's not meant to give you a direct medical advice in your own personal situation. So take this information and discuss it with your own doctor. Overall, I hope you found this information to be helpful, especially in taking away some of the stigma that surrounds taking medication for mental health issues. I'm interested in hearing about your experiences with this medication or others. Let us know in the comments below. Now I have a lot of great videos out there on a variety of health topics. Either click here or here and keep watching, or go to my channel and learn more so you can be well informed and make better decisions about you and your family. Now if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our new content. So until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, Take care of your body, because it's the only one you have.